Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we'll be taking a look at this rich and complex wave effect. So it looks like there's a lot going on, but in actual fact, it's relatively simple to make and there's loads you can do to customize it to your own taste. So let's get going. Okay, for this project, I'm going with 1920 1080, frame rate of 24 frames a second and a duration of one hour. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my Bezier tool, zoom out just a little bit, and I'm going to draw, dragging, as I go to make a nice wavy line like so. And then I'm going to hit enter to finish it off. Let's uh, center it up. And then let's come over here and I want a nice small width for the outline. So I'm going to go for two, zoom in again. And for the fill, I'm going to choose gradient. And from this menu, I'm going to select grayscale I'm going to open up the gradient. I'm going to click to make a new tag along the top there, a new opacity tag. After all these years, I'm actually calling it the right thing. And then I'm going to set that tag opacity down to zero, select this one and set that down to something like 25%. And then I want to set the Y start to 540 and the Y end to negative 540. And this is going to give us a quite nice fill for our final result. So let us now add to this Bezier behaviors, shape and oscillate shape. Let's set the speed to something like seven, I think. That's going to give us just this gentle oscillation of the shape like that. Then what we can do is we can select this group and we can make a clone of it. So right click, make clone layer, turn off the original group. And yes, you're right. I probably didn't need to make a clone there, but it's a bit of a habit and it does actually slightly change the result. So anyway, I've made a clone. From that clone, we can make object replicate. So for the shape, I'm going to choose circle. For the arrangement, I'm going to choose outline. I'm going to turn on 3D. And I'm going to start off with something like 48 points just to get us going. Then I also want to turn on face camera. I want to open up the angle end and set that X rotation to something like 120. And then I want to come down here and I want to make sure play frames is turned on. And I want to just adjust that source frame offset. So I think I might go for seven and let's have a look how that looks. So now we've got this complex wave that is evolving very slowly. So then I'm going to add a light, I think, just to make things a little bit more dramatic. And I'm going to set the intensity up to something like 750 and maybe increase the fall off to five. You can see that's also just adding more drama to everything. Let's give the replicator some color. So let's come in here under color mode. Let's choose over pattern and let's open up the gradient. And let's just pick some slightly more interesting colors for either end. So this one here, something like this. And to make this more interesting, let's add a camera. And let's set the angle of view to something really dramatic like 120. And you can probably see immediately that gives us some more interesting kind of perspective distortion. And if we then add to the camera a sweep behavior, let's set the end value to something like 360. But let's also set our timeline range. We, we don't actually want an hour. I'm just going to come to 30 seconds and I'm going to come to mark and mark play range out. And I'm going to select that sweep and come to mark and mark out just to have only a 30 second sweep like that. And as we're sweeping round, that's kind of even more interesting, I think. But actually, maybe let's also set that end value to 720. So we've got more movement. I think I prefer that. Actually, let's reduce that fall off back down to three. And what I think I also want to do, and I don't often do this, is actually to turn on depth of field. Open up the depth of field controls, set of extreme amount of 100 just so we can set up our focus. So we want to sort of set the focus somewhere in the middle like that. 
and then just adjust our near focus a little bit and our far focus so we've got a little bit more in focus but I think that's really kind of made it more interesting as well extremely shallow depth of field so what we might also do is you'll notice that there's a point at which the, the we're not getting much light on the subject so where is that so around here so I'm going to duplicate my light and then just going to move it on Z till we're getting more illumination there, maybe negative 500 on that. So we're lighting up that bit that we weren't seeing. One of the things we probably should do is just drop in a background here. So drop in a color solid behind everything else. Turn this group to 2D and just make that color solid black, I think. Always a good idea to composite against a, a color solid rather than just against nothing. So that's kind of the effect. You might need to switch to best to avoid some of that sort of line switching that we've got going on. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to do was come in here and turn on additive blend. And that's going to make everything look much nicer because we're getting much more blending of those overlapping lines. And I just wanted to point out how nice that effect was of using this fill on the Bezier shape. So if I turn that off, you can see it's OK, but it's a little bit dull, whereas the fill gives us this nice sort of ghosting. And if we wanted to increase that, we could select this left hand tag and set that opacity up to 50 percent. And we're getting even more of that effect. And there's loads more you could do with it. I think that's probably enough to give you a flavor of, of what you can do with this effect. An alternative approach is actually instead of using oscillate shape on the Bezier. So let's just turn that off. We could actually instead use a wriggle shape and maybe just turn the noisiness all the way down. Let's have points and tangents and add and subtract and maybe frequency of 0.3. But that is going to give us a slightly more complex look that you may or may not prefer. And obviously we can increase that amount, say to 360 and it gets even more interesting. Struggling to play back, of course, but you get the idea. And there's just one other final detail that I actually forgot, and that's this, this Bezier shape. Let's just add a basic motion fade in, fade out. It'll just take care of any popping of the lines as they start to appear. And needless to say, if you're feeling very brave, you can come into the replicator and you can turn up the number of lines and it's all going to get really really interesting. Let's turn off the wriggle shape and try the oscillate instead. So obviously the more lines you go with, the, the, the richer the, the result is going to look. So anyway, I hope you have loads of fun playing with this and come up with your own fantastic variants. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.